Archway Academy opened in January of 2004 uh, at a time where the Houston community really needed something new when it came to adolescent recovery. And Archway was started by a group of really concerned parents and mental health professionals and addiction experts who noticed that there might be something missing from the continuum of care in Houston, Texas. A lot of students were asked questions like, where do you feel um, the lowest self-esteem? And they would say school. Where do you have the easiest access to drugs? They would say school. Where are a lot of your dealers? And they would say school. And so this beautiful group of people came together and decided maybe what Houston needed was a school that focused just on young people in recovery. So Archway is not a typical school, but I'll tell you a little bit about our typical school day. Students arrive into our building at 8 o'clock and the very first thing they do is meet with their community in order to fellowship and build relationships together. So every morning they have about 50 minutes to be together in fellowship with our recovery coaches. And that time is spent talking about things that might prevent them from focusing on school. So they have that opportunity to be in community and to have connection and support before they head into their academic classes. I was just overwhelmed with all the support I got immediately. I was sitting in the circle, I had been there for five minutes, and I introduced myself and I started getting hugs and I was like, this is so cool. So my appeal to Archway as a staff member is that I struggle with high school as a teenager. I struggle with wanting to be sober. Um, I got into recovery as a consequence at first, but there's a very clear turning point when I realized um, that this is something that I need. So being able to talk to kids about my experience and them having a similar experience, I feel like I can help. I first started using when I was about 14. My family started moving around Houston because my mom wasn't very financially like fit. Um, and as that happened, we ended up moving to a homeless shelter and from there, we moved to the projects where my addiction grew more and more and more and more. By the time I was 13, I was um, shooting up meth. I was 14, I was about 102 pounds, um, and I was super underweight. Um, my parents were scared for my life. How many teachers in high school really know who their students are. And I do feel that, that the teachers really know who their students are deep down and try to give each student what that student needs. They're not just there to teach and go home. They're there to like make people better people, if that makes sense. They, they don't just teach the curriculum there. We realized that wow, these are very real people, and they are very honest. And what I learned with the time is that when you ask a question, you have to be ready to hear the honest answer, <laughs> which now I'm used to it. The support staff here, honestly, from the heart, is like a life-saving thing. Like, what I'm gonna say is that we've lost a lot of people in this community, um, especially um, my best friend Whitney, who committed suicide last year. Um, and I remember when I found out, it was just, um, the staff just held me, you know. Um, they didn't leave my side. Um, they just told me everything was gonna be okay. I just know that without them, I wouldn't be very far. Um, Cause no one's really loved me and taken care of me and um, told me that I'm better than what everybody else said I was. Then the rest of their day is kind of a traditional school day. They're going to math and science and English and history and elective classes. And they're going back and forth into different teachers' rooms. And they're taking midterms and finals and tests and quizzes and doing homework. And they end the day, again, with our recovery support team, um, kind of just reviewing how the day goes. They've got that one last opportunity to see our recovery staff um, to help handle any needs they may have. One of my favorite service work projects is Random Acts of Kindness. I can't say just watching you guys like go up to random people and just like like random people I'm talking about. You can be the craziest person on earth and we'll hug you. You know, or we'll give you a flower or we'll give you a card saying like, hey, like everything's okay. Um, 
that or like <laughs> that or like dancing on the side of the road and just like waving at random people driving by and like they them waving back you know like that was just like just making people's day you know some of my favorite events are our college night that we do every fall where we help uh, students in recovery from all over the city learn and understand about collegiate recovery programs that they can continue their education in college at different universities that have collegiate support groups, um, sometimes even sober living campuses. And it's a really great way for students to leave our recovery center community and then go on to a college campus that respects their recovery in the same way that Archway did. Another really fun event that we do every year is Sober Prom. We call it SPROM. And it's a community-wide event that we open up to all kids in the Houston area. And it's just a really fun way for them to get together near the end of the school year and have that prom experience, but do it in an environment that is nurturing their recovery. Um, but they have all the same hallmarks and cornerstones as a traditional prom would have. Of all of the events that happen here at Archway Academy, graduation is probably one of the most meaningful, impactful events we have all year. You see transformation happening. You see families more connected. You see parents proud of students. You see students respecting themselves and the hard work that they've put in to get their diploma. Man, when I say like the chills I get every time I see those hats fly in the air, or like the chills I get when I see somebody talking on that stand, um, and the names when they come out, and uh, the people like screaming for them every time they walk down that stage. Um, it's just chills running through my whole body. We are so grateful that she has gotten into recovery at such a young age with the world, you know, uh, at her fingertips. When Katie was at the lowest point of her addiction, I didn't trust her. I didn't believe anything that came out of her mouth. Now, I have so much trust in Katie. Our relationship is so close. I tell her all the time that a college is going to be lucky to have her, a man is going to be lucky to have her someday, you know, all of that. Her kids are going to be lucky to have her as a mom. So I feel lucky. Many of our parents didn't expect their kids to live to see a high school graduation. Yet here their kids are not only surviving the teen years, but now thriving. When I look at him, I have always loved him to death, you know, and I have always admired him and value him and love him unconditionally. But now, the respect that I have for him, the admiration, is something that I own to Archway. And I know that like, when I walk down that stage or when I walk down that aisle, that there will be smiles on everybody's faces because I came a long, long way. It will just be a miracle, nothing but a miracle.